Hello and welcome back. Uh, here working on my truck, a 1992 Land Cruiser 80, waiting for a part to come in, which is a uh, gasket for a push rod cover. Anyway, this old inverter doesn't look like it's working. I don't know. It, it, I think it's working, but uh, I've got a 30 watt pa panel on the roof of the truck, and it doesn't seem to be wanting to do anything. So I'm gonna replace it with this guy here. Here's my quick unboxing for you guys. This is a Sower PWM charge controller. And what we'll do is we'll go through the entire thing. This is the panel that I have right now. This is a 30 watt panel. And then obviously the one in the box is a 100 watt panel. But what I'm going to do is just give you the, the gist of this new PWM because I'm just going to flash through the instruction manual and then the the PWM as as I'm going through the the menu in any case here you can see it's 12.8 right now there's really nothing because it's still hooked up to that 30 watt panel um, but later on what will happen is I'll show you and this is this is where feel free to, to freeze frame if you want so that you can read the instruction manual it's not it's actually not too bad uh, but later on what you'll see is that the the panel that I put up there, once I put the 100 watt panel on there, you'll actually see maybe 0.1 amps because the battery is pretty much charged. In addition to that, what I'll be doing is I'll have to program it uh, for my specifications for the battery. Typically what I'll do is I'll have the bulk charge standard for a lead acid battery. Um, this one here, that B1 that you see over there, B1 is actually for a lead acid battery. There's also B2, B3. B2 is for a uh, lithium battery. So this this PWM will actually charge a lithium battery if you have like say a small <coughs> lithium setup of 12 volts and I think this one does up to 24 volts. So here I'll run through the, the menu and program each of those things, its parameters that I was talking about. Again my, my bulk charge will still be at about 14.2, 14.4 volts my float charge you'll see me adjust it to 13.8 that's typically where I want it my my low cutoff is going to be a little higher than normal because I don't want the battery ever going below 50 percent and then um, well that's you'll see as I program through each one of these these uh, menu driven areas what I program this particular PWM for in any case, here, I'll just show you. one should be low voltage disconnect. All right, since 2019, yeah. YouTube says you have to do this. So I'm going to do this now while I still remember. Please, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Now again, the other, the, the black PWM that you saw there is rated for 50 amps. This one here is only rated to 30, but again, I only have 100 watts on the roof of the truck. It's just an old PWM that I had. It, it, again, it probably still works, but I'm not really sure if it actually has a float charge. And, and obviously, if it stays at 14 plus, it'll eventually damage the battery. So I, I'm not really sure. I mean, I bought that you know and, and it's actually fake it doesn't go through the menu like the way the instruction manual says so I'm not sure the the one that I had prior to this one was any good this one here uh, I mean it's, it's it's also limited but at least it works as far as uh, all the different parameters that you can set up again I can adjust those things for even a lithium battery and here now is that the uh, 100 watt panels are already on there and what you'll see in a little bit is that you'll see there's actually amperage going to the battery um, as opposed to earlier where there was nothing. I see there's still nothing here. The battery is pretty much on float. So what I'll have to do is drain the battery a little bit. In a, in a little bit you'll see me put start testing like the float charge. USB and it'll go you'll see it at 14 point something volts so it, it, it's going to be charging um here 14 14.2 volts 
it's charging the battery because I, I had to use some of the the storage in there just to get it so that I could see if it was actually working. So here it's 0.1 because again it's, it's pretty much fully charged. But once I put the load on, and again I turned the load off on this particular one uh, for where the load comes out. But for the USB, there's still you can, it still works despite having to turn off the the load connections at the 12 volt connection on the bottom of the PWM. And you can see there my iPhone actually kicked up when I plugged it into the USB and I believe that charges at 2 amps I believe both of those USB connections are at 2 amps so it's not not slow but you know not not the fastest but not the slowest and here I'll, as you can see the voltage dropped on the battery that means it is working and then there's 0.3 amps coming from the uh, solar panel because it, it's really not that big a deal as far as the draw on the battery anyway thank you